Uh, hi, everyone, and you know, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Elon from Clockwork. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, clocks and you know, observability. Um, time is a fundamental concept in distributed systems. Right? So you, you open up every distributed system textbook. There's a section about, about clocks. We have physical clocks. We have you know, logical clocks. We have hybrid clocks. So clocks are really everywhere. Right? They are useful for databases, um, consensus protocols, snapshotting, and observability. Uh, however, the you know, general consensus in the industry has been to never rely on clocks when you build your own system. Right? Because clocks are very hard to synchronize, and they are very fragile. Even if they are synchronized, they can go out of sync just you know, very quickly. Right? So clocks are just uh, crit you know, quartz crystals, fundamentally. Right? And all the crystals, they have, uh, you know, inherently have different frequencies, and the frequencies also change with time. Right? So you know, the clocks are ticking at different rates. And also, in order to measure the offsets between clocks, you have to you know, send packets between the you know, servers and to measure latencies. And thus, clock synchronization is also subject to um, you know, uh, network congestion. Right? So if we had you know, super stable clocks that all have the same frequencies, and we had a you know, very stable network with uh, constant network delays, clock sync, clock sync is not a problem. However, that's not the real reality, right? So nobody actually uses clocks or depend on clocks when they build their systems. So at, at Clockwork, we believe that a highly accurate, scalable, and stable you know, clock sync system is going to you know, change the, uh, you know, the um, paradigm, right? It's going to remove the clock list assumption when building distributed systems. And it's going to enable new uh, system designs, and it's going to improve uh, the performance of, of existing systems. So NTP and observability, right? Um, so first of all, you know, timestamps are very important for observability because you know we have timestamps for spans, we have timestamps for logs. They're just everywhere, right? And they're critical for analyzing the delays and analyzing the you know the ordering our events and everything. Um, however, NTP is, is not you know, serving us well. So even the best NTP solutions uh, today, uh, for example, in the cloud, in the same region, they can do you know, tens to hundreds of microseconds. However, the one-way delays in the cloud are on the order of 50 microseconds. Right? So if you, uh, you know, send a packet from server A to server B, and you take a transmit timestamp and a receive timestamp on two different servers, you can often measure like negative one-way delays, right? For example, this uh, figure on the right shows that we are me measuring negative one-way delays just using NTP in the cloud. So these are very bad in terms of measuring latencies. And also, if you actually use these timestamps to, to determine the order of these the two events, you, you are getting the wrong results, right? You are say seeing, okay, I received the packet before I even send the packet. And outside of the cloud, NTP is doing even much worse, right? You generally got, got milliseconds, and also people sometimes see, um, you know, tens of milliseconds or even, you know, seconds, right? So actually, Michael from Aspecto just had a such, you know, such an instant in his own demo, right? Where all the spans are out of place, not all, like some of the spans are out of place. So thus we think, you know, we have already spent so much effort in, um, you know, instrumenting the code, you know, auto-generating, you know, the, the instrumentation and collecting the data. We, we really deserve some, you know, pure, accurate timestamps for, uh, for us to, you know, understand how the system is working, right? So, okay, so next I'm going to talk about three use cases of clock sync in observability. The first use case is aligning traces, right? And this has been actually a long-standing problem. Um, right? The problem is easy to understand. When the clocks are not well synced, the spans are not you know, well aligned, right? And thus, the, you know, the timing di diagram is wrong, and then we, ha we, we can you know, attribute delays incorrectly. Um, the, the community has also tried hard to cope with this problem. For example, when, uh, uh, when people know that the child span should be you know within the parent span, but however the timestamp is not saying so, people would just you know center justify the child span, right? Just just to make the uh, you know trace 
um, you know, just make make the trace more make sense, you know, make makes more sense, right? However, this you know creates further confusions. Um, so this is an example where uh, bad clocks can confuse uh, us and can you know um, you know create you know traces that make no, make no sense, right? So in this example, initially we were synchronizing clocks using NTP. Uh, we can see that a span from the currency service actually started before its you know parent span started, right? And another span from the uh, shipping service started after its parent span ended, right? Which obviously obviously makes no sense. However, if you simply switch to uh, accurate timestamps, you know the trace suddenly uh, is making sense, uh, right? And all the timings are correct, and you know everything. And there's also an additional benefit is now we can measure one-way delays. For example, now we can, you know, in addition to round-trip times, right, now we can measure uh, the time between uh, an RPC request is sent to the RPC, RPC request is received, right? And, and similarly, we can also measure the time when the RPC response is sent to uh, RPC response is, you know, received. So this has never been possible before without uh, accurately synchronized clocks. A second use case of you know clocks in observability is to you know, put distributed logs on a single timeline. You know, as we all know, the open temperature community have been working hard on logs, right? And this is only you know, one place, particularly we think you know accurate times, accurate synchronized clocks will help. Um, so in tracing, we you know we can propagate the context, right? And we can kind of you know infer the ordering of some of the spans uh, from the context. However, this will not be available in logs because logs are, you know, by nature unstructured, and we can re only rely on the timestamps to you know, determine the ordering of the events. Um, you know, in, in this you know, example, uh, we have two processes logging: you know, pro pro process Alex and pro process Bob, right? And the logs say Alex added one to to the inventory at T1, and Bob took five from the inventory at T2, and Alex added you know, 10 to the inventory at T3, right? If I were a developer looking at the, you know, these logs, I would be wondering, okay, is there a bug in my code? Because, you know, the, the, the logs are showing the inventory went, you know, went inactive at T2, right? Or is it like a timestamp problem? Maybe, you know, the clocks are not synchronized and that's, that, that's why the, you know, logs are not making sense, right? I would be wondering whether I should be, you know, spending time looking into this problem. And I won't have any of such doubts if I had accurate timestamps you know, in the first place. A third use case of uh, accurate, accurate time, sorry about this, is uh, in instrumenting message-based microservices, right? So generally there are two classes of microservices, RPC tree-based and message-based, right? And nowadays RPC-based systems are more, more popular, but there, still there are many you know, systems are message-based, right? So in, in RPC-based systems, so for every request you always get a response, right? So you can kind of get away with uh, measuring round trip times, right? You, can, you get a sense of the latency in the system by measuring round trip times. However, in the message-based systems, there are no requests and responses, right? The messages simply flow through the system, and it's actually very hard to pin down where the latencies are in the system, right? And that's why if we had synchronized clocks in the first place, we can simply measure timestamps at you know, different you know, stages in the system and get, get a sense of the delays. Are the delays happening in the network, in the service, or in the, man, in, in, in the message bus? Okay, so these are the um, three use cases um, that we 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 you know uh, we, we thought of and you know uh, for clocks in observability, right? I, I believe there are way more uh, than what we, what we talked about. So a few quick words about clockwork. Um, so at clockwork, we built a, a very uh, you know accurate, scalable, and stable clock sync system. Right, and it you know syncs clocks to nanoseconds with NIC hardware timestamps, and in the cloud we have CPU timestamps, and we can synchronize clocks to microseconds. Um, you know the, the uh, clock sync system has got onto the front page of New York Times. Uh, it has been adopted by uh, many reput reputable companies, 
and it's available on all three clouds. So the um, so clockworks, clockworks clocking system is very different from NTP, right? And we actually we actually published a paper uh, about about the system, and it's published in NSDI 18. So for the technical details, um, you know you can find them in, in this paper. We also there's also you know a, a video of a, of a talk in this link. Um, if I just talk about one difference between clockwork and NTP. I would say NTP synchronizes clocks through a tree, right? And then there are um, you know, a few problems that can come with it. For example, if a certain node fails, uh, you know, it's, it's possible that the entire subtree could fail, right? So by the way, just to be clear, so NTP is a like, multi-rooted tree. It's slightly more complicated than, a, than, than this tree, right? But however, at clockwork, we went much further. In clockwork, we synchronize clocks through a mesh, right? In this example, we have three regions uh, across the U.S., West, Central, East, right? And we have 10 clocks or you know, 10 virtual machines actually uh, inside each region. And I just picked a random clock, the pink one. And you see that this pink clock is talking to four other clocks in the same region and five you know, other clocks in different regions, right? And, the, and every clock does this. Every clock talks to a number of random uh, neighbors, right? And this forms a probe mesh. It turned out with this pro mesh, we can do clock sync in a much more accurate and tighter way, right? We can actually discover uh, asymmetries in the network. We can discover uh, that we are doing bad, you know, badly or we are doing very well. Like we can, we have an estimate of how, how well we are doing, right? And we can also, you know, uh, handle different types of failures, you know, thanks to the, you know, redundancy of, in the system. So this is, uh, you know, how we thought about, you know, we can help with the open telemetry community. Uh, first of all, we want to make clock sync available to the developers community, right? So we, we're going to have, you know, UTC synchronized time that are tied to, you know, uh, GPS clocks. And uh, we're going to have globally distributed time servers, right? So that the accurate time is accessible by, you know, all developers. The clock sync system is going to do uh, orders of magnitude better than NTP. And we also plan to uh, provide a Google True Time like API, where there's a bound you know associated with every timestamp, so you know how much you should be trusting the timestamps. Uh, secondly, uh, you know the, the second idea is that you know this is only an idea, and we'd love to you know, get your feedback on that. Is that we think you know in addition to timestamps, it's actually critical to know how much we should be trusting the timestamps, right? And we think maybe we should be you know, generating and propagating and storing the accuracy levels for the timestamps along with the timestamps, right? And that's when you are an, an analyzing the data, uh, you, know, you don't make silly mistakes, right? You don't just trust wrong clocks. A third idea is that you know, we can make a timestamp translation service, right? It may be difficult for people to switch out NTP and use a different clocking system. But however, we can do translation after the fact. You can just run NTP as is and collect whatever timestamps they provide. And when you want to analyze the traces, you can just you know, translate the timestamps and get the corrected timestamps on demand. And that uh, con con concludes the presentation. Um, at Clockwork, we, we believe you know, accurate clocks and globally consistent timestamps can make open telemetry tools better and debugging much faster and easier. And we'd love to hear your use cases and you know, uh, we, we want to you know, hear about our feedbacks too. Thank you.